Hello everybody, I'm Berenice Batu from the University of Freiburg and today we will talk about taxonomic profiling and visualization of metagenomic data. So the idea uh, of the tutorials that we will go through today um, is to answer a question of which species or other taxonomic levels are present in a metagenomic sample, what are the different approaches and tools we can get or uh, we can use to profile uh, the community uh, in a metagenomics data or in metagenomics samples, and how can we visualize and compare uh, different community profiles from different uh, samples. This topic, we will follow a tutorials from the Galaxy Training Network called Taxonomic Profiling and Visualization of Metagenomics Data that you can find on training.galaxyproject.org, um, but that you can also, uh, in the metagenomics section, but you can also use it directly from the Galaxy. So then if you go in your favorite Galaxy instance for, for this tutorial, so I will use Galaxy Europe and you click on the hat on the top. So see Galaxy training materials, you will be redirected to the training, uh, Galaxy training um, website. And if you scroll down to metagenomics and then you go down to taxonomic profiling and visualization of metagenomics data here, you would be redirected to the tutorials we will follow today. And the idea of this tutorial is uh, that at the end of the tutorials, you are able to explain what is a taxonomy assignment or taxonomy profiling, um, how it works, um, uh, apply Kraken and Metafiline to do taxonomic assignations, um, and then apply Krona and Pavian for visualization of the result of, of that, uh, of Kraken and Metafilan, and identify uh, taxonomic classification tools uh, that fit best for your data. So first, uh, let's go back to the, to the, um, sorry, to the ID. So um, we talk a year about metagenomics, and when we do metagenomics, we we mostly try to identify, to, to uh, characterize the microbiome. Um, so, which means if you take the definition from Wipes et al. in, in, uh, in 1888, um, a characteristic uh, microbial community occupying a reasonable, well-defined habitat for which has distinct uh, physical, uh, physical chem chemical properties, and that doesn't refer only to the microorganisms involved, but also uh, all their activities around. Um, and so microbiome data can be uh, gathered from different environments, thought, for example, the soil, water, but also human gut, as you may heard, or different uh, parts of your bodies. Um, and there is a different biological interest that rely on the question of how a microbiome present in a specific site can influence the environment. So how the gut, the, your gut microbiome can influence your health, for example. And so when we want to study a microbiome, we need to use indirect methods like metagenomic or metatranscriptomics to get an idea of what are the microorganisms that are there and what they could do there in this environment and how they can interact with each other. A metagenomic sample, um, usually, so the indirect method that you can use is, for example, metagenomics. And metagenomics, uh, what does that mean? It's, it's when we extract the DNA from all, from organisms at a different specific site where a, a samples were collected, and we extract the DNA and then we sequence this DNA uh, to find out which organisms uh, exist or coexist in that niche at the each exact time. And we can also identify what are the genes that are present in these uh, different organisms. And if we talk about metatranscriptomics, uh, we can include also the expression of these genes. Um, so uh, what, which genes are differentially expressed uh, at a certain uh, site uh, compared to another one. Today, in this tutorial, we will focus more on metagenomics data, but the idea is similar for metatranscriptomic data for profiling uh, the, the organisms that are there. Um, and so when, when we do uh, uh, investigate what, which microorganisms are present at a specific site and their relative abundance, so if we have certain organisms more present than the others, what we try to do is uh, doing a microbial community profile. So doing a profile of the community of microorganisms there. 
And so the main objective is to identify the microarchina that are present within a given samples and then maybe compare between different, between different samples to compare things. Um, yeah. And so the first things we want to do is because we cannot usually identify each individual organisms, what we do is identify different taxon. Um, from which the different reads or the different pieces of DNA that we sequence with metagenomics uh, belongs to. So what is met taxonomy? So taxonomy is a method that is used for uh, naming and defining and classifying groups of biological organisms based on uh, shared characteristics. For example, uh, phylogenetic characteristics or morphological characteristics. Um, and it's uh, uh, completely funded on the idea that uh, similarities come from a uh, common uh, similarities come from a common uh, un uh, evolutionary ancestors. So uh, within this idea, we have a defined group of organisms are known as taxa, and taxa are given a, a taxonomic rank and are aggregated in different groups um, that uh, create uh, some sort of taxonomy hierarchy. And there is eight levels of, of, of hierarchy that go from the, from the domain on the really top uh, to kingdom, phylum, class, uh, order, family, genus, species, and we can even go below with strengths and, and more, more specific afterwards. And for example, if we take the taxonomy of, uh, of the cat, we go from the kingdom that is Animalia, uh, Philium cordata, class Mammalia, order Carnivora, the family is Felidae, the genus is Felis, and the species is Felis catus. And we see that, for example, uh, the cat and the panther here are belongs to the same genus. Uh, no, not the panther, it's... Um, it's I, I don't know which type of I don't remember but uh, sorry and but you see that the panther is here and it belongs to the same family as the cat. Uh, if we take the dog and the and the wolf, they belongs to the same genus. So both are different species, but they belong to the same genus. The the bear belongs to the same genus, and all of them uh, belongs to the same order of carnivora. Um, and when you, the taxonomy classification uh, big, uh, uh, begins by three domains that comprise all the living and extinct forms of life, that are the bacteria and archaea, that are mostly microscopic uh, and single cell organisms. Um, and then we have the eukaryota, uh, that is uh, the domain eukarya or karyota, that contains more complex organisms in which, for example, the human belongs to. And when a new species is found, uh, they are assigned to a taxa in the taxonomy hierarchy. And for example, if we try to tax to we found a cat, um, we identify a new species uh, from the genus Phyllis. We will add that to the to the species. Then we are we will uh, expand the, the things and add the different levels based on where it's based on the taxonomy. And from this classification, we can generate what is called the tree of life, which is known as the phylogenetic tree, which is a rooted tree um, that describes the relationships with all life in Earth. And what is on the root is called, from, for example, what we call the last universal common ancestor. And then we have the three uh, main branches uh, that are the bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota there. And then we can you can, if you are interested, you can go deeper in the tree of life and, and go through the different levels. Um, yeah, and that thing, so I, I really recommend you to play a bit with this taxonomy, the tree of life from life map to, to get more in depth. So when we talk about metagenomics data, uh, what we start with is a uh, sequence error from DNA fragments, so really small DNA, small reads, that are isolated from a sample of interest, and uh, ideally this sequence come from all microbiome uh, in, your, in your sample are present. Um, and so the idea is to compare this DNA sequence found in the sample to a reference database where we know um, that could help to assign, okay, this DNA belongs to this taxon or this taxa, or something like this. And, and then uh, we can derive a list of all the microbes present in the sample. And when we're talking about taxonomic assignment or taxonomic classification, uh, there is two main approaches that are used, that is called taxonomic binding, where we try to close, we, we take the approach of uh, first binding, so combine 
uh, cluster the, the reads uh, based on similarity together first and then afterwards assign to each of the cluster uh, a taxon. A taxon. And then the taxonomic profiling is doing the inverse, is comparing to the database first and then afterwards aggregating the information uh, for taxon to extract the relative abundance for the different taxon. Uh, today we will talk uh, only about taxonomy profiling, uh, the taxonomic binding. There is another tool for that, that uh, another tutorial, sorry, that you will be able to follow to, to know, learn more about that. To getting the reads, we can use two approaches. We can, uh, or different approaches, uh, for metagenomics somehow. We can use amplicon sequencing or meta or meta taxonomics, um, like 16s or 18s, where only a specific part of, of of the DNA is available. And when we do shotgun metagenomics, uh, then we have all the DNA mix of all uh, things. And today we will really use uh, shotgun metagenomic sequencing. And so when we do taxonomic profiling that we do today and not binding, um, there is different approaches that can be used to compare the DNA to, to the database. So we can do a DNA-DNA comparison. So we compare our DNA to a reference database of DNA. Um, and it's using tools like Kraken uh, that we will do now. So we really take all the reads that are there and all the content of the reads and compare directly to the database. We can do that with, uh, we can also do a DNA to protein comparisons where we take the DNA and then we compare to a database of proteins. Um, and that is used, for example, in tools like Diamond that do that. Another approach that we can do is targeting some specific marker genes, for example, the 16S or other marker genes in which, in reads. Um, so we don't we take all the DNA, but we target in this DNA, in our samples, only a specific portion of the DNA or, or the genes. Uh, that is usually faster, but that um, can be, yeah, we can reduce a bit the, the, the information there. And there, but there is tools like Metafilan that do that. Um, but uh, when we and so that is the three the three way or, or the three database that we can use or type of database and uh, then uh, when we want to compare the reads to the database there is different way of doing that afterwards to compare the reads to the database to whatever database we want to use we can use the genome based or where we read uh, we align the read to the full genomes of the in the reference database we can use a gene base so it's uh, similar to the marker gene base. So we really target only reference genome genes or the camera-based approach where then um, we cut our reads in small uh, strings um, that is called a camera and then we compare uh, the profile of that, the camera profiles of different uh, uh, to the reference uh, database and uh, that is uh, the approach that will be used that is used by Kraken here. You can read more about that different approach with the year. Um, and today we will uh, go through the camera-based approach uh, from the DNA to DNA and also use a marker gene-based approach uh, with metafilan. For that we will use a data that come uh, from um, an oasis in the Mexican desert uh, that where you can find the publication here. And the ID, uh, the researcher were interested in the genomic traits that affect the rate and cost of uh, biochemical information processing with Intel there. So they performed the whole ecosystem experiment by and, and so extracting the data from the ecosystem before, then they fertilized the ponds to achieve a nutrient enrichment conditions and then they sequence it. So we have then two data sets. Uh, one control that is called GCA1A that is uh, uh, before a fertilization and a GP4D uh, that is um, after uh, when you have fertilization of the plant. So the two data sets that we will use, so we will use these two data sets just as an example there. Um, the idea is that everything you do there can be expanded to much more samples if you have more. But the, so these data sets differ a bit in size, um, but it doesn't really matter for the identification of the genomic trait um, because there is some normalization that is done. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So now what we want to do is to get the data in the galaxy so that we can uh, run that, we can prepare that. 
So let's do that. Uh, let's go to Galaxy. So I, I am in Galaxy now. One of the first things I need to do is to create a new history. Uh, I need to rename it. I will name it Taxonomic Profiling. Taxonomic Profiling and Visualization of Metagenomics Data. You can name it another way, uh, just for an easy way to, to remember what is in my uh, history. So that is the first thing. So I create a new story, I rename it. Now I need to import the data. So the things I would get, I would get my data from Zenodo. So what I can do is you can uh, copy, click here on copy. Then it will copy your your data, um, your your the the file the links there. You go back to Galaxy. You go to uh, upload data here. So you click on upload data. You click on past fetch data. You pass here your 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 links and you can click on start. So again, I close that. Um, so I go here on the small art, I copy, I click on copy here, I co click on upload data, I click on pass fetch data, I pass my link here, and once I'm ready, I can click on start, and then when it's uh, green, you can click on close here. Um, and here you should have four data sets that appears in your history. Another thing we want to do is to organize uh, these data sets into what is called a paired collection. So it's a collection where, because here we see that we have for each of the samples, we have two data sets. So um, underscore R1, underscore R2. Underscore R1 is the forward reads and underscore R2 are, is uh, reverse reads. So we have parent data for each of the two data set, two samples. So we want to, m to make the data um, Built in a way that we know that these two belongs to this uh, two belongs together, these two belongs together, and then we have what is called a collection that you can learn more about in the GTN. Uh, there is tutorials for collect about collections. And to create a collection, what you can do is click in here, so on this small uh, check icon here, uh, select all, and then you can select all here. Uh, and then when you are in for all selected, uh, you click on a build a data set, a build list of data set peer, pair here. Um, and then you need to say, I want to do underscore R1, underscore R2. All, so this one and this one, uh, I click on peer of this data set because they belong together. This one and this one belongs together. I click on peer of this data sets pair of these data sets. Uh, then I want to remove this FASTQ Sanger here. I click here, I click on my file, and then here. And then I can rename here. I will put, put that in trees. Uh, that is the name of my collection in my history. So again, what I did is, um, so I click on for here of selected items for all selected, and then I got a, a, a boxes that show you how to peer, pair your data sets to create a collection. And then in your history, you should have now a collection that is called input data sets, input tree, sorry. And then with two uh, pair, pair here, one G, C, A, uh, one A, G, P, four D. And inside you should have uh, two things that is called forward and reverse. It should uh, download uh, from Zenodo, it would take a few minutes, so you can wait a bit, a uh, few minutes. Uh, we have uh, the inputs, um, then the uh, next things we want to do after that is we plan to use Kraken2, so a camera-based taxonomic uh, classification tools uh, for uh, identifying the microorganisms or the taxa in our reads. Um, so what we will do, we will compare the reads to a reference database. Uh, so, a re so a reference database is somehow, uh, so it's a database of sequence for which we know the taxon. Um, and so we will use Kraken. So Kraken um, is using a camera approach for taxonomic classification. So what it's doing is we use a database containing a DNA sequence of genomes uh, for which we know the taxon. And um, in database, this, the genome sequence are um, 
the sequence of these uh, genomes are broken into short pieces of length k, that is called camera. It's usually 30 base pair. And what does Kraken do is examine, it, it takes our input reads, so the reads that we will give it, um, cut it also in, in short uh, reads of length k, compare these cameras uh, in our input reads to the database itself, so search these short cameras into the database, look where they are placed uh, within the taxonomy tree inside the database, and then make a classification with the most probable propositions. And then map the cameras to the lowest common ancestor for all the genome that known uh, that known to contain these things. So you have your query database here with all cameras. You know that so this camera, for example, um, is found in this uh, ancestry. Um, oh, yeah. So for example, this uh, this camera in in. Um, in orange is found on this uh, this uh, individual here on the bottom, and in both cases, so we know it's not specifically to this one or this one, it's specific to this taxonomic level. The blue uh, cameras are, can be found on all the leaves that are below this blue there, So and the latter's common ancestor will be this blue, and so these cameras will be assigned to this blue there. Um, and same for everything there. So if this, for example, this camera in, in uh, um, violet, I don't know, purple, sorry, um, if this camera is found here, here, and here, so in this organism, so then the largest common ancestor that uh, contains, of, of leaves that contain these uh, cameras, will be this one. So we say that these cameras belongs to this taxon there. So this dynamic tree. Um, and, and then, yeah, it's the way somehow it's done to classify the things. Um, so that is the original Kraken. And then Kraken 2 uh, is an extension of that uh, with a, a different data structure that is uh, make it faster. Uh, and with lower memory requirements, um, you can see the details about that in the in the paper here. For these tutorials, we use uh, so there is different database we can use for Kraken. We can build our own database. We can do uh, different things. In this case, we will use a pre-built database that is called Plus PF. So that contains the standard database, so archaea, bacteria, uh, viral, plasmid, uni, human and uh, univec core, plus protozoa and fungi database. So you can see a bit more uh, where it comes from. So the archaea come from RefSec, or uh, complete archaeal genomes and proteins. Um, same for everything. So you can see here, and the database has been prepared and pre-built by Ben Nangmeet, and you can find the details on this on the page that you, is the link there. So here, what we will do, we will run Kraken. So you can click on the tool here directly, and it will load Kraken with the version, correct version. We will use a pair. We have a paired collections. Uh, it found directly the input read here. Uh, we will change the threshold, confidence threshold, so uh, our confidence are we with uh, what has been identified. Um, we put it a bit low, uh, higher than the uh, uh, usual confidence um, threshold, uh, just to minimize the false positive. So Kraken is known to provide a bit of uh, some false positive. So we, we, I, we increase a bit the confidence. Um, then what we want to create a report, uh, we want to print a report with aggregate, cons and CLAD to file. And then we need to select the database and we say plus PF. And we will use the standard, this one that uh, is the most recent. So we don't want the plus PFP, we want the plus PF here. And then we can launch the tools. So again, I will do, go back here. I click on Kraken, uh, then we said uh, here paired collections, uh, input treats, the confidence is 0 0.1 here. The report, we click on create report, we want to print a report with aggregate uh, cons uh, data files and we want the plus PF database that is from, uh, that has been downloaded in 22. 
If you are more interested in Kraken, uh, you can read the document, the, the papers for that. But there is also one thing I want to recommend you to look. Uh, there is a podcast that is called Macrobioinf. Um, and they did uh, two episodes about with the Kraken developers. And that was quite interesting to understand uh, the Kraken um, and, and some how Kraken works. So that uh, I can really recommend you to have a look there. Um, so Kraken will take some time to run, so I do a short break and I come back uh, in, a, in a second. So we now have two uh, collections that has been generated by Kraken, so one that is called a classification and one called report. So if you open the classification one here, um, that is the standard output of Kraken, what you see, especially if we take the GC 1a. It's a long file that has uh, one more than 130,000 lines, and you have different columns. So you have five columns in your in your file. You have uh, one first column that will tell you if it's classified or not. So U is unclassified, and C will tell you it's classified. The second column will be the ID of your sequence. So uh, in your that corresponds to your FASTQ file or your FASTA file here. Uh, here it's a FASTQ file. Uh, and then uh, the, second the third column will tell you uh, which taxonomic ID uh, it has been classified, if it's classified. So it's only when you have a C here, you will have an information here. And here it's a taxonomic ID uh, for the classification. So if you take for this one, for example, and you say tax ID uh, here, oops, sorry. Uh, in NCBI, uh, it's say that uh, so you could search on NCBI directly with taxonomic ID. It's the one from NCBI. You see, it's Homo sapiens. So this sequence has been assigned to Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. The third column, um, I think it's um, if I correct, I think it's written in there. It's uh, the length of the sequence in in base pair. Um, for read, so for the forward and for the reverse here, you see that. Uh, and then um, what is called a space delimited list indicating the lowest common ancestor mapping of each camera in the sequence. So for example, if you have this sequence here, you say that the first uh, 13 cameras are mapped to the taxonomic ID uh, 100, uh, 562, then the second uh, the next four cameras had been assigned to the this taxonomic ID. Um, then the next uh, 31 cameras contain an ambiguous nucleotide. Um, then the one camera was not in the database. And then the last three cameras uh, mapped to the taxonomic ID here. So in our case here, so we say that uh, so 148 cameras were assigned to this taxonomic ID. 19 were not mapped at all, 19 were mapped afterwards. Here we have something, it's ambiguous, or we have nothing. Uh, 19 again to this one, 19 to nothing, and 148 again to a uh, human. So that's how you can interpret that classification. Uh, so then the question is, uh, is this uh, one has been uh, classified or not? The answer is no. So I think you can see it here also. So it has not been classified. Uh, so the first classified as uh, this uh, taxonomic ID. And, I th and we say that it's Homo sapiens when we look for uh, in uh, NCBI. I think for me the most interesting uh, report, uh, uh, rep uh, output from Kraken is this report. Um, if we open that one, um, you can click on the eye icon here to, to see it. It's again a tabular file, um, but with much less lines. So it's here it's uh, 536 lines for this uh, thing. And that tell you um, that regroup the classification by taxon. So it, it groups the information that were in the classification file and report uh, one line per taxa, identify taxa. Um, except the first line. So the first line will tell you how much has been unclassified. So in, in this case, for this file, for these uh, samples, 
um, around 76% or 77% of the read has been unclassified. And then afterwards it tells you that 23 has been rooted at the root uh, and then we tell you um, so in the domain bacteria it's 12 point uh, something percent of the read has been uh, assigned to bacteria. So the first column will tell you a percentage, uh, the second column will give you a, a real numbers of reads there, the third column I always forgot so number of fragments covered by the clad rooted of this uh, taxon and the number of fragments directly assigned to this taxon. Um, so the difference here is this one, this number is this one that are directly in the root and here it's at the roots plus every uh, everything that is below the root, below this, uh, this level here. Um, and then you have the rank on the column 4, so it's um, um, here domain, phylum, class, order, family, uh, genera, species, etc, etc. And, um, and if you have a taxa that in any of these uh, 30 ranks, um, they are formed by a rank, for example G2, um, it's because it's between uh, genus and species um, and yeah so it's a bit more complex there and then you have again the taxonomy the NCBI taxonomy ID and then the the names uh, the uh, scientific names um, of the taxonomic ID here yeah. so if we look at uh, so what is the percentage of classified and classified for both cases if we want to see side by side, we can use uh, the window manager here. Uh, so, and then I can click here, it will open the report for this one. And if I click again this one, then it will see. So we can, and we can, ah, sorry, I have a duplication. And then it will load, hopefully, uh, the report on both cases here. What is it? Yes, it's loading. So for uh, GC. 1A, we have 30, uh, 70, um, 77% of the read that are unclassified. For GP4D, it's uh, around um, almost 90% of the read that are unclassified. Um, and what are the kingdom font for us? So, we kingdom, we need to uh, search for. K, can I find a K here? So bacteria or domain, you can think about domain, D uh, for domain, sorry. So you have bacteria here, what is there? Also, and if I search for T, oh, can I find T? Um, sorry. Oops. No, what happened? Look, scroll down. So you can find uh, a karyot. So here you have bacteria, so you have some bacteria. If you scroll down, you should find some a karyot also at some point. Um, here we are still in bacteria, bacteria. Bacteria, Pseudomonas, Bacteria, Bacteria. We have some verses here, They're really low numbers. And here, well, we have still bacteria, but where are the human? Here, so we see Homo sapiens. Mm. Saccharomyces was a bacteria, uh, so we should have some plant here. Hmm. Let me see. Ah, eukaryot here. So we have nine percent of eukaryot, and uh, yeah, almost nothing of uh, of uh, viruses. 
and here. So another thing we could do to uh, oops. No, that was not what I wanted. Here, here. So what you want to do if you want to to see only a specific uh, um, for example, I want to see only the domain here, information over the domain, you can do a filter on so I want to do on the filter on the column four, so C four equal D D, sorry, with here. So I want the column, I want only the rows where the the, the column four is a D. And then I can extract this information for both of the cases. Um, so we say that there we have we have some eukaryotes there. Um, it can be a human contamination. It uh, when there is a sequencing, but also because of the site there. And now we need to search for proteobacteria. And how can we see that? So proteobacteria in both cases. Um, yeah. No, I don't want to be that big. Ah, yeah. So if you search for proteobacteria, you can find proteobacteria. And you see we have a lot of things below that is visible and we have quite a lot. So before we got this next P here, the next phylum, there is a lot of, it seems to be a lot of diversity uh, there of things. Um, and for here, uh, proteobacteria, we have still, bo in both cases, we have a lot of proteobacteria, it seems. Uh, yep, but we need to have a better overview of that. It's, uh, we need more visualization. Uh, so it's really not straightforward to know uh, the output uh, directly there. Uh, let me check if the filter worked. Ah, it's working. It's running. And you see here, um, so we can clear see. So in in the GC1A, we have some bacteria, eukaryote, and verses in. GP4D, we have a carrot, we have also Archaea and viruses a bit, but the numbers, it's zero percent, so we cannot really count that Archaea and viruses. It's only one or five read that has been assigned to that, so I will not even count them. I will keep only the Archaeot and Archaeota for this one, and this one here, yeah, it's okay, we can put viruses also, but really, really low, low concentration there. Um, so once you have that, uh, to get a really better uh, abundance estimation, you can use, and more reliable, you can use a tool that is called Bracken. Um, it's giving a more probabilistic, it's giving a probabilistic approach to generate final abundance profile. I think it's a good, really good thing, especially to, when you want to have an abundance profile at a certain level, so for example species, uh, it redistributes the reads in the axonomic tree, and it's more. It's uh, the the results are more reliable. The only thing currently, it's um, the tool has a bug, so I will not run that because it will just give empty outputs. So for now, I will skip that part. But I recommend you to have a look later. We hope to fix that in the next uh, days. But as you say, you saw that it's not really easy to visualize the data. It can be uh, tricky to, to identify a certain um, taxonomy level and see uh, the abundance at the certain taxonomy level. And so for that, we can use tools like Krona, Finch, or Pavian. Um, currently, I will, just, I will show you how to use Krona. So Krona um, creates an interactive uh, HTML file that uh, allow you to visualize, to see for one uh, sample, um, uh, the hierarchy of the data and zoom uh, in that in different levels is quite nice. I really like this tool. Um, but the Kraken outputs cannot be directly used by Krona, so they need to be first converted. Um, so for that, we use a tool, a suite of tools that is called Kraken tool, and then we run the tool that is called Kraken uh, convert Kraken report files to. Krona. 
So you can click on this uh, file, um, select the collection year, and be careful of selecting the report and not the classification year. So create, uh, select the report file here, and then you can run the tools here. It will, uh, it will create the, the outputs there. I have generated a collection again of report, um, to reformat report. If you open that, you uh, the one of the file, you will see that the output is formatted a bit differently to the report. So the first column is a, a number, so it would be the number of reads that has been assigned to this uh, taxon. Um, then you have different columns that correspond to the different taxonomic levels. So the first column is the kingdom, then you have the phylum, uh, the class, the order, the family, the genus, and the species. And so you have eight columns there. And so for each uh, row, you have a number that corresponds to the number of reads that has been assigned to these uh, rows. And, uh, here. and you see it's the same for, for both cases. Um, and then once you have that, um, so again, oh, it's a bit annoying every time that it's doing that. Um, then you can run Krona. So Krona, it will take these outputs there. Um, you need to say it's a tabular file. And then you need to select the Kraken uh, tools output there and run the tool. And it will create uh, one HTML uh, file or report uh, for that. Krona is finished. I have now one HTML file there, and if I open it, um, so I have something that looks like this. So it's an HTML report and it's interactive. Um, what I did is I just hide the things on the side. You can, it's on the bottom left and bottom right. And here you see uh, for both, you have both uh, samples available here. You can click on which one you want there. And you see that you have an interactive uh, things. You can click, you can, you see the number of unclassified, so 78% for the first uh, sample. And then here you have the number of eukaryotes. Uh, if you click there, it says that here on the top, it's 30% of the root is the bacteria. And if you click there, you can go deeper in the different phylum and even to the species. Um, so if I click on proteobacteria here, it tells me that it's 70% of the bacteria, 9% of the root, and, and then here I can even go deeper um, in, in the different levels here. So here in this genus and etc. etc. Um, so I had a question, what is the percentage of classified and classified for GCA1 and GP4D? Um, I think we already found that, so GC uh, one uh, and if I want to go back to the root, I, j I click here. So I have 78% here and I have 90% for the other five samples. The next question was what are the different kingdom found? <coughs> Sorry. Here you have bacteria, viruses, eukaryotes and viruses, but really low numbers of viruses. And uh, for the first samples, it's mostly yeah, bacteria, eukaryotes, and viruses also. The next question is, uh, where might the eukaryotic DNA come from? So if we click on eukaryote here, it comes only from Homo sapiens for this, for this sample. And for the other sample, it comes mostly from eukaryote, but also from others. Um, there seems to be other things that are there that are uh, more from maybe fungi that looks, um, yep, mostly from human, uh, but that are probably human contamination. And how the diversity uh, is the diversity of proteobacteria in both, uh, in both uh, cases. Uh, so I need to go back to the root. And here I click on bacteria, proteobacteria. Um, do you have a similar diversity in both cases? Um, I think it's interesting to see. So we have a lot of other proteobacteria in this one, a bit less here. 
we have a lot of alpha proteobacteria in this uh, in the first in the second sample uh, a bit less here we have more diversity of other things um, yeah it's it's quite interesting so it's diff a bit different here um, yeah GP seems to be more dominated by alpha prote uh, alpha proteobacteria so another approach we can use to visualize the data and maybe compare a bit better is using Pavian. So Pavian is an interactive tool for metagenomics data. Um, so it was mostly developed for clinical metagenomics uh, problem, but it can be used for visualizing any type of metagenomic data. So to do that, you need to click on Pavian. Um, then you need to, okay, I, I can, I need to do, I uh, show again uh, my histories. I need to click on collections. I need to use the report. Be careful of using again the report and not something else. So the last one here. And then um, it say waiting for interactive tools uh, to become available. So it's gr it's a gray, a gray year. And when the interactive tools will be available, it become orange. R orange mean, it doesn't mean it's, so it's mean it's running. But it means it's available and you can interact with it. You don't don't wait until it's uh, it's uh, uh, it will never become uh, green, uh, or only in one in one day when the t the tool is automatically killed. Um, but for now, you need to wait uh, um, uh, to become active here. So either you wait until the link is available there uh, when it's around there. Oh, what other things you can see is uh, your active interactive tools will be available here. And here, oh, what happened? So it was killed somehow. Interesting. Um, so it should appear here in your history. It should be open, so you could have you should have the click the link here, or you can also click here on this icon. Run, see running uh, interactive tools, and if you click on here, open interactive tools, it will open a new tab with the interactive tool itself. Um, that will take a bit of time of loading, and once you are there, you should have something that is uh, like this. Um, you can upload files or you can use also the files that are directly put from the server so from Galaxy so you click on use data on server here um, and then you click this folder and click on read selected directories it will load all the files that are there so it's good to have a collection because it put everything there correctly um, and then it creates a table to say um, are you okay with the sample set? So you have two files, the names are GC1A, GPD, and you have the path here. It's mostly things that are need to be set up for, shi for, for this shiny app, this Pavian app. So you can click on save table, and once you have the save table, then here you can have a look at the result overview. Um, and the result overview gives you first a table that is here, with uh, you see the name of the sample, the number of row reads, and some extra information. I will just go back to the tutorial to check what is the next step. So we, we did that. Um, then the question is, uh, does both samples have the same size? And the question, does the same, ah, same size? Nope. I mean, we see that uh, definitely GCA1 have much less worry than GP4D. Uh, what are the percentage of classified reads for GCA1 and GP4D? Um, classified, we see 20% here, 10%, so we have a low, low, low numbers of uh, percentage of reads in GP4D than um, GC1A. And what are the percentage of bacterial? Uh, are they similar? Um, we have a low, lower number bacterial percentage here in the GP4D than in the um, GC1A. So what we can do now? Ah, um, yeah. So we have similar order, maybe to just a bit lower. 
Another things we can do is now inspect uh, by samples. So if you click here on the left on the sample, you have what is called a Sankey plot. So a Sankey plot, the question is what is a Sankey plot, a Sankey diagram or Sankey plot. So a Sankey diagram is a visualization that used to depict a flu from one set of values to the others. And in this case, the set of value are the taxonomy hierarchy. So you go from the domain to the kingdom, to the phylum, to the families, genus and strains, etc, etc. And here, domain and kingdom are really similar. If you see here, you can see that just a okay, carrot and fungi, maybe. And <clears throat> so you can, you can see the things here. Um, and uh, if you click on proteobacteria here, you see, uh, so I clicked, either you click here, but here I clicked on proteobacteria, and you can compare the number of read across all samples. So across here, the two samples, you can see that uh, for the GCA1, uh, how much you have, and GP4D, how much you have. Um, and yep. And do you have the same numbers? I mean, it's expected that you have more for GP4D because you have much more reach. So it's here it's a really number of reads, it's not really a percentage, so it's not really comparable because you don't have a, some sort of normalization um, there. Um, now, if we would like to compare the samples, what you can do is you can go to comparison here and uh, you can select stuff so you can really compare you have here the both samples and you have several information here uh, and here you can s so what we want to do instead of comparing the raw numbers uh, we want to compare percentage um, so we can unclick reads and click just a percentage here um, you can click on domain here to be able to compare the domains. So here we see the percentage and we can compare that, see that bacteria have a higher numbers percentage of uh, read assigned to bacteria in GP4D than GC1A, for example. And that is what is there. Um, and one thing we can do is we could also filter species um, I'm just lost a bit on Selectosam or sapiens in the filter So here I can select so here I have this button filter taxa and if I want to select I can filter out the host and here specifically um, here Homo sapiens, it will remove all the Homo reads that are assigned to Homo sapiens to make it more easy to identify the percentage. Um, so it's normalized, it removes Homo sapiens from, from the uh, report and say if we remove Homo sapiens, it means that 90, almost all the reads in both cases are assigned to bacteria. So then the proportion are really similar between the both samples. And if we go to the classes, then we can even compare the bacteria, uh, which uh, do we have a high diversity. And we clearly see that GP4D has a high proportion of the majority, really vast majority, almost everything, uh, is in alpha proteobacteria for GP4D and not for GC1A. So um, we have much more diversity uh, in terms of, of classes in GC1A than in GP4D. Um, and what could that mean for G if we say that GC1A is the control and GP4D is a sample from the fertilized plants? Um, so it seems that then alpha proteobacteria are more uh, resistant to the fertilized. So they have a several advantage in the new environment, so when there is fertilization um, compared to the other ones. So the fertilization seems to have killed a bit of the diversity in the terms of classes. And, and according to the authors in the paper, this correlates to with a specific uh, genomic trait that enabled them to cope better with high nutrient availability. 
So it's somehow what you can do. You can we don't have we didn't put the BAM file, so you cannot have an alignment viewer, but you could also add that maybe in the data if you are interested. But you can really go in depth in different uh, levels and the different levels you can look at the rank, you can um, you can do a lot of things uh, there. So which one is um, highest in terms of rank um, here. So that is um, here. Uh, information that you can hear. You can re go to the taxon instead of the clade. Uh, so, yeah, uh, a lot of things that you can do with Pavian. Once we are done with Pavian, uh, we can uh, delete the, in your history so that the job is completely uh, killed. Um, you could also use, uh, instead of Pavian, another uh, taxonomy classification tool for this. Uh, to another visualization tool that is called Finch. Uh, you have an explanation in these uh, boxes that you uh, expand to explain how to use that tool um, there. I will not uh, use uh, show you now how to do that. I recommend you to do it on your own later or do it now if you want. Pause the recording and do um, and do and do that. Um, so when it comes to taxonomic assignment or taxonomic classification, uh, Kraken is not the only tool available, and there is several tools uh, that benchmark the different tools. Um, so you can have a look, uh, for example, in the so the Kami challenge. So the Kami is critical assessment uh, for microbial investigation, something like this, and uh, that uh, investigate uh, different tools for metagenomics data, uh, for different types, so they do for binding, for assembly, but also for classifi taxonomic classification. And they use uh, similar data sets to, for all these uh, different, uh, what they call, um, challenge. And um, then they, they ask people to, to run that on their favorite tools and they aggregate the results and they created a, two papers for that. Um, and then you can look here uh, in these papers what are the different tools people usually use for this for this uh, step um, to perform this analysis and and how the Kami uh, authors aggregated this result and to identify the best tools for different um, for the different um, tasks that they have to do. Um, but there is another tool that uh, were published in 2019 uh, from Ye et al, where they perform uh, benchmarking analysis themselves of different tools. Um, but yeah, they, they have uh, different approaches. As I said, so Kami is more a community-oriented approach of, of uh, so it's a it's a challenge. Um, a year tool, it's more, uh, it's, they did the analysis themselves and they didn't use both also use a different uh, approach, different uh, data sets. Um, for the Kami MEA, you can see there, and, and but several metrics are used every time to, to compare the, day, the, the different results, so the precisions, uh, so it's mean the proportion of true positive species identifying the sample. Uh, the recall, the proportion of true positive divided by the number of distinct species actually in the sample, the prison recall, uh, recall curve and the L2 distance. Um, so it, to identify how accurate the abundance of each species, um, reflect the abundance of the species in the original, uh, so the, it's somehow the ground truth. Uh, but yeah, so it, it's just to give you a bit of an explanation how to interpret this, uh, this uh, these papers. Um, and in terms of, of profiling tools, uh, there is uh, three type of padding uh, that are, yeah, you can you can read a bit more about these profilings, if they are really uh, precise or not, uh, etc. But globally speaking about a classification tool, there is a few tools that uh, you can find there. So Motus, um, Metafilan, Dudes, Focus and Kraken. I will skip Bracken here because Bracken is mostly an extension of, of Kraken. 
Um, and if you see, you can see where it has been used um, and if it's available or not in Galaxy. Uh, so currently it's mostly Metafilan and Kraken, with Kraken available in Galaxy. We are working in integrating Motius also. And because you see uh, that is the most uh, memory efficient um, there. Uh, Metafilan, for example, is recommended for low computational uh, requirement from Ye et al. Um, and Kraken seems to be also a really good one. So that is uh, which one selected, which tool to use. Uh, this one, if you are interested, we could try to integrate into Galaxy also, but that you need to probably contact us to um, do that, where we can do it maybe together, integrate these tools in Galaxy, if you will be interested to have them and if you need them. <clears throat> and if you have other tools that you want to integrate in this uh, in this table, also please contact us. We can expand this table, so we can show you how to expand these tables to make it a better overview of everything that is really available. If if something we miss something there, please let us know. That would be also great to have a, a really good tutorial there. The, just to highlight uh, how to integrate, to, to for example use the mark, uh, use the marker gen based approach uh, for, uh, using Metafilan. So we could use also yeah Metafilan to do the classification. Um, we mentioned so as mentioned so Metafilan is uh, uh, based on so marker gen so it's use um, um, a unique cloud specific marker genes uh, identified from around one million microbial genomes um, around that, yeah, that have, uh, yeah, so it's a big, big database of marker genes that they did um, that allows an ambiguous taxonomic assignment, accurate estimation of organisms, relative abundance uh, that go can uh, do resolution of the species level for bacteria, archaea, eukaryote, and viruses, and can also be used for strain identification and tracking. Um, that is quite quick and <coughs> and can do uh, clade estimation, uh, clade abundance estimation. So, um, in a nutshell, um, Metafilan identifies the clades present in the microbiota from a microbiome sample and its relative abundance. Um, so, we can use uh, Metafilan in Galaxy. Uh, especially the new version. Just to be aware of that, uh, if you search for Metafilan uh, in the in the Galaxy tool uh, bar on the, on the toolbar in the left in Galaxy, you may find Metafilan and Metafilan 2. Metafilan 2 um, is currently an uh, older version compared to Metafilan version that you can find in Galaxy. Um, I will show you, so uh, if I click here, um, and it open Metafilan, you see that the version is 4.0.6. Uh, it's really, it's meaning that it's a version zero, uh, it's this version of the tool. It's not the version 2. Point something, it's a version 4. Point something. It's, a, it's because uh, Metafilan developers did a renaming of, of the way they, they named the tools. Uh, they used initially Metafilan, then they say Metafilan 2. And uh, starting from version 3, they called it again Metafilan only and not Metafilan, something in the tools, uh, in the command line tools. So it's why it's a, it's a bit um, um, messy and I'm sorry for that. So um, the only thing, so if you see, if you want to run Metafilan directly, you c you cannot really uh, give your parent, it expect uh, something, you cannot give it a parent col a paired collection as Kraken, it expect a forward and a reverse collection. So the first things we need to do, uh, we need to split our uh, input reads collection into two collection, one for the forward and one for the reverse. So we need to unzip, it's called unzip. You can find that in the in co collection operation. It takes a paired uh, collections and split into a collection with only the forward and a collection with all the reverse uh, things. And once you have that, uh, so it's quite quick, it's almost instantaneous, uh, then you can run a Metafilan. And so for Metafilan, then um, 
you say you have a paired end uh, files, then you can click your collection uh, first, your forward collection, second, your reverse collection. Um, and then what are the other you want? We want an output that can be used for Krona. So you need to scroll down a lot uh, and uh, output for Krona. So globally, so we said we want to have a paired uh, end file. We said collection here, we, we selected forward reverse here. We use the uh, default parameters here. We need to be sure that we have a, uh, the correct database that is selected. So it's the latest one, so from October 22. Uh, and the other one you leave, you just scroll down until the end and output of Krona, you say yes, and then you can launch the tool. And it should create five uh, new collections in your history. Afilan is now done. We can uh, inspect the outputs. Um, and I will look at the most important, so that is the main outputs of, of Metaflan, is this predicted taxon relative abundance. Um, it's give you, uh, yeah, it's a table. We'll look at the GP4D one. It's a table that looks a bit like the report, the uh, Kraken tools uh, format. So, uh, yeah, okay, slightly different, sorry. So this one, in the first column is, uh, so one line after the one started with the hashtag is one line per taxon. And where the first column is the, taxon the taxonomy uh, description where every level is, is each level is um, uh, so between two levels there is this pipe to show that we are talking about a different level and then you have the level uh, which levels you are talking about with uh, represented by this first letter like K, K underscore underscore and then you have the level, the, the, the name of the level. So here we have kingdom, bacteria, phylum, bacteroidetes, and etc. etc. classes, etc. Um, so that is it's how metaphilan looks like. Um, <clears throat> and and then you have uh, so here then you have here the taxonomic id and cbi taxonomic id uh, again uh, with the different levels so it's it's like the how it's written it's um the lineage with the different taxonomic level and then the uh, the ncbi taxonomy of the of the lineage taxonomic level so you represent a complete lineage uh, separated by the the pipe then you have the relative abundance of this uh, specific taxonomic level and potentially any additional species there. So which kingdom has been identified for GSA1A uh, and with Metaphilan we have nothing. So nothing has been classified for these uh, data sets and GP4D we have only bacteria that has been identified. So uh, much less diversity compared to Kraken. So uh, it's really reduced. So we have almost nothing that is identified with uh, Metaphilan compared to Kraken. Then you have uh, other um, output that has generated. So you have a predicted taxon um, um, relative abundance for Krona. That looks, uh, it's a similar output that the Kraken tools output uh, with the column First column being the percentage of read assigned to the taxon, and, and then the different column being the different levels. Then you have a collection with um, <coughs> where the taxonomic level are split in different levels. Uh, where is it? No, I don't see it. Um, it's maybe I've been removed. Then you have a biome file, and you have a bowtie output and some file. I think it's because. Um, yeah, I needed to select something else to have this uh, collection with the same information. Um, 
<clears throat> you could run afterwards Krona on on the on the output of Kraken on this predicted taxon relative abundance for Krona. In this case, it's not really interesting because the diversity is so low that there will be nothing displayed here, uh, only that we can go to these levels. So I will not run Krona. I recommend you to do it on your own if you are interesting. So, as, Paul, as I said already, the community looks a really lot diver less diverse for Kraken with, uh, with Metaphilan compared to Kraken. It's maybe due to the reference database that is used, um, that may be not complete enough to identify all taxon. Or maybe there is uh, too few reads uh, in the inputs to cover enough of the marker genes. So the marker genes may be not represented in that uh, data. Um, so, I'm, I'm really not convinced we need to, diff to change a, a different data sets uh, probably for this tutorial to really show the powerful of Metaphilian compared to Kraken. But yeah, I'm sorry for that uh, example. We really need to change that tutorial. So globally, just to sum up this tutorial, so in this tutorial we looked uh, how to get the community profile for microbiome data using Kraken and Metaphilan. Even if Metaphilan didn't give really good results for this data set, I can guarantee it give really, really good data sets on other, uh, especially on gut data, on gut microbiome or, or something. It's really powerful. It's giving you really good, nice results. Um, and then we visualize the data, the result using Krona, um, but we can also use Pavian and Finch for that. Um, and then uh, we could discuss which tools using in which context. Um, I would say, for example, Kraken is good. Uh, so Metaphilan is good at uh, human data, for example, or human microbiome. Uh, Kraken is maybe better, for example, in soil data or more uh, environment that is less... Uh, L less characters, I would say. Um, yep. So I hope with these tutorials you learn a bit about taxonomic uh, profiling, taxonomic verification, and, and community profile, and how you can do that with, with using Galaxy. And I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. And if you liked it and you give it feedback, we really would appreciate that you you fill this feedback form at the end of the tutorials to give, to tell us how to improve uh, these tutorials. Uh, and then on that, thank you and have a nice... Uh, you can follow one of the next uh, tutorials, for example, the taxonomic binding or taxon or metatomic assembly or also applying uh, how to apply that on real-world data, for example, a beer microbiome, uh, also doing metatranscriptomic tutorials. Uh, you can learn other stuff afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>